Zum Kinostart vom neuen Darren Aronofsky-Film Mother, den ich persönlich richtig stark finde und der vom Publikum einiges abverlangt, hat Patrice, der die Interviews auf meinem Kanal führt, an einem Pressedinner in Paris teilgenommen. Patrice in Paris und dabei die Chance gehabt, mit Hauptdarstellerin Jennifer Lawrence und Regisseur Darren Aronofsky selbst ein Interview zu führen. Und diesen Blick hinter die Kulissen wollen wir euch natürlich zeigen. Wer darüber noch mehr Lust hat, Kleinigkeiten zu sehen, Patrice hat einen eigenen Vlog hochgeladen über diese Reise auf seinem Kanal und freut sich sehr, wenn ihr dort vorbeischaut. Und jetzt ganz viel Spaß mit den Interviews mit Jennifer Lawrence und Darren Aronofsky und Themen wie Empathie, Einfühlungsvermögen, was die Motivation ist, solche Filme zu machen, bis hin zu Naturkatastrophen rund um Mother. Hi Jennifer, last time I saw you in uh, Berlin, uh, where you referred about like uh, drinking during Christmas. I hope that Christmas went well. You sitting. I in don't front remember of me. Christmas. Yeah, so apparently everything went well. Um, coming straight, a question that of course can only come from a man because. Uh, without spoiling anything, then again, like, you know, screw it. There's just one moment. Okay. But easy with the... <laughs> yeah, when you, when you receive, when you receive that, that, that script, um, would you have thought some of the scenes to be so graphic as they are in the movie itself? Yeah, I mean, I was really shocked a studio was going to pay for this movie. I mean, when I read the script, I was like, That's, uh, how is he going to make this? I mean, I'm in. I think it's a masterpiece, but the fact that... The fact, that Paramount <laughs> yes. the fact that Paramount agreed to do this movie is incredibly brave and bold. Well, it's far from being a Transformers, I tell you that. Yeah. Uh, but the, the question I wanted to ask like, from a male perspective is because, like, you know, as far as I know, you're not a mother, uh, but you are very convincing when it comes to the reaction that you would consider coming from a mother. Is it that you had like a coach that tells you, like, listen, a mother would feel like this? Or is it you've been asking your family and friends how they deal with lasts, for example. Where's that coming from? Um, I mean, it comes from the same place as everything with, you know, with a performance. It just comes from empathy. So even if I haven't experienced something, um, I have this area of empathy that um, I can use my imagination to kind of access. But I also have it, like, if somebody's telling me a story, I'm like, uh, stop. <laughs> um, so I really just used my imagination and my empathy and I, you know, I was worried about how to get there because like you said, I'm not a mother. I did talk to my mother um, about, there was this one specific part that I don't want to ruin anything for anybody, but um, I had an instinct that I would want to take everything back. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but take back. And I didn't know if that was just silly, if you would just like crumple on the floor or, um, I talked to my mom about the kind of specific things like that, but really, I mean, any woman can imagine, even though I don't have children, I mean, that feeling is just awful. I mean, a couple of days before I did that scene, I hyperventilated, just freaking out about having to go to that, uh, having to go to that place. And in general, like, people just love you for being kind of a goofball. I feel like people hate me, but thank you. No, but seriously, it's like I sometimes... Comments. No, whenever I'm asked, especially when I talk to women, they're like, oh, I love her, she's such a goofball. And then you see the, those roles that you play where you have this sadness, and again, also, like, this, this anger. Is that really because, like, in real life, you're such a well-spirited person, apparently? I, we don't know each other personally. That you I'm bipolar. Have a, <laughs> a, apparently. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, no, I mean, it's just my, it's my job, you know, I, I, I love acting, I love creating characters, they don't really have anything to do with me. Um, I do have, you know, a little well that I can pull from, but, you know, I'm not, if I'm crying in a movie, it's not, I'm not ever crying about my life. I don't, I've had a great life. I couldn't cry about anything if you asked me to, you know, I've, um, well, I've had a lot of people die on me, but anyway, um, what? <laughs> I was just asking where that where that's coming from because like Jack Nicholson just, once said eighty percent is always of yourself in the role. It's so what? It, he said eighty percent of what you do as an actor is like actually coming from yourself. Who so said it must that? be Jack Nicholson. I'm a huge fan of that guy. Oh well, yeah, uh, well me too. That's I, not true for me. It's not true for you. No. Uh, um, there's. I mean that has been true at times. I have played characters that are ninety five percent me or eighty five or felt like me, but but that's not that's not like a blanket statement for me. He can't say something like that. But in He's general, Jack Nicholson, of course he can. But, but going through the references that uh, Darren has, has ma managed so far to this point with all these actors being apparently really like more than just happy just to work with him, what is it that makes him specific as, an, as a director that, like Michelle Pfeiffer, Ed Harris, and all of these characters are coming in and it's like, yeah, sure, 
I sent out. What is it about what? Well, oh, what makes what him is it about? Specific I mean, for like me, a, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, I've been a fan of him for so long. I just think he's the most unique director that's out there. I mean, all of his stuff. He's so daring. He's bold. He's just not afraid. He just doesn't. He doesn't care about reviews. He doesn't care about the reaction. He just has a story inside of him, and he has to get it out. And then after working with him, I'd want to work with him again. I, I mean, look at Michelle's performance. Look at Javier's performance. Like he pulls the best performances out of people. He's so descriptive and um, and clear. He just has such a clear vision. But this is why I mean he cannot be really afraid of the reaction of people because I think he does everything on purpose. Because like when it comes to his craft, he's really good, so he knows what he's going for. Do you think there's anything that would even surprise him as a director? Well, I think that he knows he was going to piss some people off. I think he, I mean we all knew we 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 weren't on set like thinking we were making like you know a darling. We didn't think it was going to be you know like everybody was going to love it. We knew people were going to hate it and be frankly offended by it. Um, so we knew that the reviews were going to be polarizing and, you know, it's, it's controversial. Well, and thank you so much for, for your time. And yeah, it took me a night just to digest that. He yeah. definitely managed that. And it's impressive you digested it in just one night. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think there's some few more nights coming in, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet Bye. you. Thanks. Hi, Darren. Such Hello. A, such a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. And as we don't have that much time, there's so much stuff because, like, seriously, this is the kind of movie where you need to talk, okay. like, quite a bit about it. Thank so you. So let's start with the craft, first and foremost. Okay. You like grainy. <laughs> That's, like, the easiest question that can come up. You like grainy. Is it, yeah. How come? I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I started in 16. I've always loved 16 millimeter. I've always loved the feel of it. Um, I think in today's world, most movies are shot with these incredible cameras, but the images end up looking very, very similar to each other. I think the second you shoot 16 millimeter film, it gives it a, its own aesthetic, and that's interesting. And if your aim was to achieve that people feel very uncomfortable because, like, you know, the camera's always very close to Jennifer, for that matter, yeah. I mean, you achieved that quite well. Thank you. As for the rest, I like, the first moment was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say that? Uh, yeah, sure, sure okay. I'm allowed to say that. Okay. It's, it's, it's French. We are in Paris. Uh, like, what yeah, the fuck yeah, is like yeah, a French yeah. thing? Because I was I was so surprised and and I was glad that I heard something about an interview before where you said like when you wrote it you were really like in a dark place you really felt totally uncomfortable so I kind of expected something like this but it really took me someone who kind of explained me because I'm not a religious person uh, just to give me some some hints and advices so that I was like oh that's what he's going for uh -huh. but is it that you would expect like from the majority of the audience just to be really so much into any yeah, stuff. I don't think uh, it necessarily only works if you have a knowledge of stories. I think it's also a story about a husband and wife living in a house whose marriage is starting to crumble and uh, how that plays out. There's also a bigger allegory going on, um, which a lot of people will play with and think about and talk about and debate, and that's great. Um, I heard also like about the, the feedback that you got like in Venice, a place that you used to be quite often. You also been like the president of the jury. Is when when there's a crowd like really ecstatic on one hand, but also like very mad at you. Yeah. Is it isn't it is it really that you feel like very embarrassed about it, or is it rather that you feel like great now I got them? <laughs> well, my my dad told me. Uh, I talked to my dad when I was in London, and he told me that um, we were driving around early when my first film was out and. We drove by a theater and I said, Dad, all I want is for them to either cheer or boo. I want, if they're just sitting in the middle, I'm not interested in it. So I think I've always been interested in, um, in basically trying to push films out of their comfort zone. Oh, you, you, you achieved that. <laughs> but where's the idea coming from? Because for a second, I even thought like when, when you were talking about some sentence came up like, yeah. is that kind of a hint <laughs> on, on social media for this song? Yeah. Is he criticizing social media, <laughs> anything like that, or where is that coming from? I, I don't know. It was very much a, um, it was very much a snapshot of like being, being in uh, Manhattan in 2015 in the summer. There was just all, you know, if you flip through the newspaper and you just look at what people are writing about and what people are really going through, it's very intense, and um, I, you don't see that often reflected in the movies when you go to the movies, sort of that madness and insanity of, of, of this world where, you know, we're carrying these devices in our pockets that are constantly buzzing, giving us the craziest of headlines. 
you know, we're, we're seeing two of the worst hurricanes in the history of the United States happen within a week of each other, a couple of weeks. Um, I lived through Sandy. I had friends who lost their homes in Katrina. These are all things that were supposed to happen just in a generation. Now they're happening every few years. And so I, I, there was, it just brought up a lot of feelings. And making films is really a struggle because there's just endless amount of no's and doors slammed in your face that you got to have something inside you that gets you out of bed every day. And um, this was something that really inspired me. All right, time is up, and as I'm I've so said, sorry. this would take like. But nice thank to you. meet you very much.